It is Saturday, June 8th, so it's time for the Mad Pixel Weekend News where I just, you know, talk about a few different news stories or topics. You know, sometimes, hey, like I put out this last uh, Friday, what topics do you guys want me to discuss? What, suggestions, that kind of thing. Put it out on Twitter in the community tab. Got a few responses, got a few responses. So if I saw your response and I'm talking about something, I'll, I'll put your name, your username in the video, a little shout out. So I appreciate you guys, but we got a few that I want to talk about, rant and ramble about, give you guys my thoughts and opinions. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Rita's Rewind. So I guess this was announced uh, the other day. I see on Steam, they have this summer game fest thing where this was going on yesterday. I, I don't know, man. I guess I was busy or something. I didn't watch summer game fest, but I heard it was pretty lame. I can't really comment on it. I don't know if it was actually lame because I didn't watch any of it, but maybe I'll have to see if there's a uh, you know replay up and see what was discussed. I don't know if Power Rangers was part of that or not, but let's take a look. So this is from Digital Eclipse. I'm going to play the video. I'm not going to play the audio because I think it has Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Go, go, Power Rangers song. And I don't want to get like copyright striked by Sab Saban or whoever the hell those people are. So... I saw this earlier when I was prepping for this video. Freaking looks amazing other than the little animated cutscenes. I think the graphics look sick. And then there's like these weird little mode seven sec, like this the animation, this art style. I don't really like it, but in game, the pixel graphics look slick. I'm gonna have to overlay the actual video. This steam video, it's the compression looks like ass, but they got like these mode seven, Looking stages, little minecart action. I think it's like five players. Is is the White Ranger, Green Ranger up in here? Look at that. D this game looks sick. So this is supposed to come out like later this year for every console, PC, all over the place, all over your face. I'm down in it. I like the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. That's the only one of the series I ever watched. Never watched any of the others. So that's the only one I have some kind of nostalgia for, I guess. But this looks pretty sick, you know. I, I love what Digital Eclipse has been doing. They make some awesome collections and games. I Like I said, I, I don't know about this damn animation style with these uh, little cut scenes. Like, look at look at their faces. Watch. Like, I, I don't know, dude. I, I, I don't like that. It's not my... Uh, it, it doesn't tickle it for me, but the gameplay and the style in the gameplay does. So, hey, that's fine. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers re Rewind, the team faces off against a robotic reincarnation of their longtime nemesis. Robo Rita has conjured a portal to send herself back in time so she could finally vanquish the Power Rangers, right? I pulled up the Steam page because the Digital Eclipse page didn't have as much information for some reason. But I want to look at the features here. So classic 90s look and feel with hand-drawn pixel art. I love it. I love it. Fan favorite enemies pulled from different seasons of the hit TV show. Events and episodes that players remember from the show have been remixed. Action-packed 2D brawler gameplay with arcade-style shooting and driving sequences. That stuff looked cool. Like the Mode 7 style, that, that looked awesome. Pilot all of the original Dino Zords. Oh, my God. I remember when the first series came out and all the toys and stuff. It was an amazing time. It was an amazing time. Jump into the cockpit of the legendary Megazord take down gigantic bosses. Offline and online support for up to five players. I wonder if they're going to have secret characters, you know? Like, I, I would imagine you'll have the, the white and green ranger. I, I would imagine. It's possible, right? It's possible. So that, that, was the, that was like my favorite thing that I wanted to talk about. The most interesting thing to me. Rita's Rewind, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers coming out later this year. I'll get it for Switch. You know, I don't know if I'll get a review copy or not. I love you guys, Digital Eclipse. You know, you show me some love. Show me some love, maybe. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll buy it. I, I don't care. Um, next up, Vim's Lair. A few people brought this up. I've never, never used Vim's Lair. Believe it or not. I don't care if you believe it or not. But um, Vim's Lair has been around for a long while. And I don't think it's like down or anything. It's just the news has been um, that they've been asked to remove a bunch of games on behalf of Nintendo, Sega, Lego, and the ESA. And they state on their June 6th, this was just a couple days ago. I think this was like an ongoing thing. At first it was like Pokemon, Nintendo, and then it just all kind of 
piled on or something. Um, but they state while most of these games and the hardware to play them have been sold in decades, ultimately it's their prerogative. So these games are now gone for good. Does not surprise me. I saw like a few days ago, because I was planning on talking about this anyway. Um, but I, I saw a few days ago people on on social media saying that it's like YouTubers' faults that these types of sites get taken down. And I, I don't really quite understand that. Um, do YouTubers bring attention to some of these websites? Sure. I'm bringing attention to it right now, briefly talking about it. But at the same time, like I've, I've never um, in my YouTube videos talked about like, like particular ROM sites, like, Hey, go to this ROM site, go to that ROM site. I've never done that because not because like to not bring attention to them. I don't really care about that because Nintendo's going to find out about you anyway, especially like at some point they're just going to pull the trigger. I would imagine if they can, like if, if, if they're able to go after you, they'll go after you. But I mean, there's other places that I've kind of hinted at in the past. If you're looking for, you know, ROMs to emulate and stuff like that, um, you know, internet archive, things like that. But I, I guess Vim's Lair has been a very popular one. I've heard of it before, but just have never been to this site to download anything. And people are annoyed, you know, blaming YouTubers, blaming, uh, you know, people on social media, bringing this stuff up, I, I, I guess. Um, and I, I don't think that's necessarily fair, uh, you, you know, they're going to find these sites. Like if you're Google searching them, they're going to find them. Nintendo's got those ninjas out there looking for this kind of stuff. Um, does it help bringing attention to it? Probably not, but they're going to go after them one way or another. But yeah, just to bring that up, Vim Slayer, they're not gone. It's just those specific games from those companies, right? Doesn't shock me. When I see stuff like that, it doesn't shock me anymore. At all, at all. The next one, um, I think one or two people brought this up, and I, I, I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, this is kind of jacked up. Indie dev baffled after acquaintance clones his game, puts it on Steam, and acts like it's no big deal. Happens every day, homie. Roll one up, homie. Dire Dex creator, Ken Denice. I, I don't know how to say that name. Is that a loss after fellow indie dev remade his game and refuses to take it down? So this this uh, individual Terry Brash um, took this game, thought they were you know the acquaintances with this Ken Denice, swapping tips with a fellow game dev, chatting it up, and then one day like says hey, like I copied your game, dude. I put that shit up on Steam. Like I redid everything. The original game, um, Dire Dex, was like on itch.io, and. I guess they were talking, they're just acquaintances, whatever. And then one day, yeah, this this Terry Brash just told this individual, I, I copied your game and put it up. And it looks like one to one. Look at this. Side by side comparison of Dire Dex by Ken Denice and Wild Card by Terry Brash. Brazen stuff here, man. Brazen stuff. A year passed, and then this week Brash sent Ken Denice a Discord to share some cool news. He cloned Dire Dex in a new a new engine, added some new features, renamed it Wildcard, put it on Steam under his own name. This isn't one of those gray area situations where one game derives its basic design from another, but brings its own look and spirit to the table. The games are visually almost identical. And Brash himself called Wildcard a rewrite and a clone of Dire Dex when he introduced it to Kindanice. Kindanice was taken aback, flattered perhaps, but confused, according to this PC Gamer article. He asked Brash if he really thought it was okay to take the art and concept, put it on Steam under his own name without permission. Brash seemed taken aback, pointed out that the code was original, and he'd redrawn everything. Asked if Kindanice wanted an inspiration credit. Bro, there's inspiration. Then there's blatantly copying an entire game. Kinda nice replied. Like, look at this. Like, the cards, everything. It looks like an interesting game, but holy crap, man. Here's Kinda Nice's uh, comparison. My game, Dire Dex. Look at this. Terry's game, Wild Card. They look identical. Like, they just straight up copied this ish, dude. And then you go to Terry Brash's pinned post on Twitter X. He got he got community fucking um he got he got a little context from the community post here. Readers added context. Terry has copied the full game from another developer, uh, which has had their game out Dire Dex for over a year on itch.io. Terry has been accused of doing this more often, and he's trying to jokingly brush it off. 
Like, how is he jokingly brushing this off? Like, that's crazy. Like, he's just making fun, thinking it's a big joke. Like, he doesn't care about his reputation, stuff like that. I think that's weird, but some people, man, they just don't see an issue with stuff like that. Like, if I were to, um, like, say, for example, if I were to go to, like, another YouTuber, like, their channel, copied word for word what they did, took all their clips, maybe made a couple slight changes, and then presented it as my own, and then get called out for it and be like, hey, bro, like I added a couple little things. Like everybody does, this, people do this every day, homie. Like, what's the big deal? And like, I told that individual, like, that'd be, that'd be scummy if I thought like there was nothing wrong with that. And that's how this guy acts, you know? You take from somebody, if you don't like, it's not about giving credit. It's like you fully took, you didn't take inspiration and build upon it, you stole. And you don't see anything wrong with it. It doesn't matter if he's putting the game up for free. No, I, I, I thought that was ridiculous, man. But yeah, there, there's my little rant and ramble for the weekend. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Bye.